Good everyone, today we're working on my Hilux again and I'm upgrading the front brakes. So I'm gonna bring you along with me and show you how it's done. So spares box were having a sale uh, and so I managed to snag some DBA parts. We've got the T2 rotors. They are a 780S uh, and some performance brake pads. And that is the part number there. All right, there's three things I'm gonna recommend for this job, uh, specifically this 54 millimeter socket. And I have ground it down to fit in the space. We'll come back to that later. But you will need that. Uh, copper grease helps and wheel bearing grease as well. And some gloves, because this can be pretty messy. We will need to disassemble all of this. We're basically going to go pulling the hub off, the spindle, and then separating the hub from the rotor itself, putting the new one on and putting it all back together. And we'll probably re-grease the bearings while we're in there uh, and bleed the brakes once we're finished. All right, so I've got flexible braided brake lines uh, and they run down into a hard line here, which then runs back into the caliper down here. Now we are gonna have to undo that because it isn't flexible uh, and it's gonna get in the way. So we will be taking the caliper off. So first things first, we'll undo the brake line. Now I just like to use a thick wrench. So I'll just crack that loose and then undo it with the 10 mil. All right, I've got a caliper off. We've still got the pads in there. We'll come back to this later after we've changed the rotor. Now next we want to undo these six bolts. So we've got a nut and a washer here. And then there's a tapered fitting as well, which we've got to get out. And the trick to that is just to hit beside it with a hammer. Really? Okay, I was wrong. You do have to take this off. Uh, so take it off first and then you can get a socket onto here. You don't have to do it the slow way with a spanner. Now we can take this off and that's going to expose two nuts uh, and a retaining plate. This is where we need the 54 millimeter socket and the one I bought was too big to fit in the hole available so that's why I've shaved it down with an angle grinder. So first thing we've got to do is fold back those tabs. Take this plate off. There is a washer in here. We'll take that off. And now we can take the whole hub off. While we have it apart, we will just take this bearing out, re-grease it. There is a bearing on the back, but in order to get this out, we'd have to remove this seal and I don't have any replacement seals, so I'm just going to leave that in, get as much of the old grease out as I can, uh, and then re-grease it. Now on the back side here, we're going to have six bolts. That's what holds the hub to the rotor. We need to undo those, and then hammer the hub away from the rotor. All right, I've just got the rotor and hub propped up on some timber. Now I have this 90 by 90 offcut of timber. I'm going to put that on top and just hammer it out. Alright, now it's all disassembled, we can clean up around these edges, get those mating surfaces ready for the new rotor, and clean out all this grease, and chuck it back together. Alright, that's seated. Now I'm just going to go to town with the impact on these. All right, time for some reassembly. We got our bearing in there. We'll put our washer on, our first nut. Now this first nut we're doing is what sets the pressure on your wheel bearings. And you want to tighten that up pretty much without a ratchet. Just get it as tight as you can with your hand. And then you just want to go a bit past 
hand tight. You can always back it off as well, make sure the bearing's seated properly, and do it again. Now you don't want to have any play, backwards and forwards, but you definitely want this to spin pretty freely. Now with that done, we'll put our little locking collar back on, and we just want to pay attention to that first nut, what orientation it is. Now one of the corners is lining up with this stud, so we just want to make sure that doesn't move once we've finished tightening down this second nut. Alright, now we just want to fold some tabs away from the car and towards the car. You just want to lock that lock nut and the nut on the wheel bearing to this collar. Now there is a gasket here that's already stuck to this piece. I just like to put a bit of grease on it, keep it waterproof. Line that little locating pin up with its hole. I've just got some acetone here, it's pretty much the same as brake cleaner except it's not in a can. We'll keep these rotors as clean as we can as we go, especially the back side, because by the time we put the caliper back on, uh, there's not going to be any access to actually rub this clean, so we'll do it now before we put the caliper back on. Alright, we're back to our caliper, we're going to do the pads now. So we've got these clips here, they hold on to our pins. And our brake pads slide left to right along those pins depending on how they're getting depressed with the pistons in here. So we'll pull these two clips out. We've got our bleeder at the top and our fitting here. So this is inboard, this is external on this side. That clip stays at the bottom and this clip here can only go in one spot because there's no hole for it on the other side. So that's how this sets up. I've got my little tub here because there's going to be some brake fluid that comes out. I will be depressing these pistons back in because we'll need to do that to fit the new pads in. There's going to be more material on them. Alright, we'll just pull our pads out. Now you can do this with the caliper still in the car, but in my circumstance, I've already pulled it off, so I'll just do it like this. Now the calipers are two different shapes. The one with the arch in it here goes at the front or closer to the outside of the car and this one with the weird clip at the bottom that goes at the back so closer towards the engine oh, we just want to clean those holes where those pins go now we also want to make sure these pins are looking brand new and that's because the pads slide left and right on these pins and you want to make sure they're sliding freely and that way your brakes are going to be working as efficiently as possible Alright, I've got my pads here. Now they came with a special kind of grease. I think it's just to reduce noise. Now make sure you put that on the back. Now we don't want to touch the braking surface. We can just drop these in. Now we just want to put a tiny bit of copper grease on these pins. If you use too much grease, you'll get grease on your pads and that's not good for braking, so we'll just get these in. Alright, now we just want to put these little pins back in, these retaining clips. Alright guys, I've just finished tightening up those calipers as tight as I can get them, so... I'm just a quick bleed away from getting this car back on the road. Hope you found this video useful. Uh, there's plenty of more automotive and household DIY videos on my channel, so feel free to check that out. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments below. I'll always get back to them. And until next time, thanks for watching.